I go in and spend, you know, hundred and fifty dollars as a family on a meal, and you get cigarette butts and garbage, and blah, and, you know, it's all crazy looking, right? So you go in and welcome the hostess and hostess welcome mat, right? That's a nice little welcome mat. Hi, how are you? And, but what if you get that one that doesn't make eye contact with you? That you know you don't you can't even interact with for five minutes, right? So you got to be careful of that. And then, you know, the hostess and hostess seating. Intuition. What do I mean by intuition? I go into a Chili's at three in the afternoon on a business trip, and there's one table, and the one table has six kids, two parents. The kids are climbing all over the, the booth, and everybody's yelling and screaming. And what does the waitress or what does the hostess do? She she seats me right next to that table. There's 35 other tables. I, can sit. I don't want to sit there. And she probably, if she had intuition, she would know. What happened right here in town? My wife and I went out to dinner. Uh, right after Sunday church, I might have told you guys this last year. It was about a year ago. We go to dinner after Sunday church, and we're we're sitting in, in, in you know we're, we're in the back room. You got to walk on a level floor, and then you got to go up a little plank. And these these booths are situated maybe uh, you know six to eight inches off the ground, off a off a riser. So. We're sitting there eating, we're sitting there going on, and all of a sudden I see the hostess come over, and she's got her, you know, menus just like that, and she comes over, and you know, is this lady with cane? Yeah, okay, okay, here's your booth right here. Gosh, I'm sorry. I can't get up there. Is there any way we could have that four top over there? No, I'm sorry, this is, this is the only seat we have right now. We don't have that open for a half hour. I'm sorry, but if I'm the restaurant owner, if I'm representing Christ, I'm serving others with interest more important than myself, right? Philippians 2, 3, 4. Say, wait a second, huh? You know, whatever. Bet, 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 come in for a second. No, we don't do that. You've got to have some intuition. That lady can't get up there. And this lady, she goes on to say, the girl says, no, these are your feet. She goes, well, I, I can't swing my hip up there. I, I can't get up there. You know, I had surgery, whatever it was. And she said, well, I'm sorry, I can't seat anywhere else for, for 30 minutes. The four top, tons of four tops, they're open. She just happened to point at one. So basically, this young lady said, I'm sorry, you're going to eat here, lady. You're going to have to swing that hip up there and get up there. I don't know how, but you better do it. So they got up there reluctantly. What do you think she thought about when she left that restaurant, that woman and those other three ladies that were with her? Probably not good. Right? But we got to sit down and tell Betty that, hey, listen, or Johnny, whoever it is, Look, you got to have some intuition and, and seat people in ways that are, you know, in ways that are good. Table preparedness, table cleanliness, utensil cleanliness. Now, my wife and I were at a very expensive restaurant two, three years ago. We're sitting there waiting for our, you know, waiter to come. We see a busboy go over. He takes four glasses. He puts his water glasses he puts his fingers in all the four glasses, so he's got a little quad. He walks over to the table. Mm. Boom, 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 boom. Mm. My wife's like, can you believe it post-COVID? You see what he did? <laughs> I mean, his fingers were all in. I don't know whether he got like his butt. He's cleaned the you know, table. He was pulling crap out of the dishwasher before. I don't know what he was doing, but I don't want his paws in my drinking glass. Well, then every drinking glass around that whole restaurant you have to assume has been handled the same way so again that was an opportunity without the manager being there but through training they could project or represent right a servanthood that you know he doesn't the manager doesn't know this is happening right or maybe they do but if they don't my goodness this is this is creating an unfavorable impression and I've now fallen on my sword in one of those little mosaic, you know, stones in the, in the sidewalk. So again, um, utensil cleanliness. How many times have we gotten a knife? How many times have you guys got a knife or fork or spoon? And you sit there and you take your shirt and you go, oh, oh that, geez. It's probably soap, who knows? But you know, still, I'm going to fix the washer, do something. You know, rinse them, dry them, hand dry them after that. But don't give me silverware that it's got spots all and crusty, you know, crusty sauce from the steak before. You know what I mean? So then the environment temperature, right? The environment comfort level. So is it is it wait staff centric or is it customer centric? Gosh, excuse me, is there any way you could turn this air down? Those fans are blowing like, no, I'm sorry, they like to 
keep it this way because the wait staff gets cold. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> Am I cu are you customer centric or are you wait staff centric? This happens all the time, all the time. I see couples say, I see people commenting on it. I have to comment on it. We've got to put our shirts up. You know, I'm 65 years old. At 60 years old, is going to these places and a draft down a neck is just like uncomfortable. We went to a restaurant not too long ago where the same thing happened. The wait, the, you know, the, the waitress came over and my mother-in-law is that she's 84. I mean, we are frozen. This fans right on us. It's it's this temperature is out today. There's no reason this thing needs to be on. And so we say something to the, the waitress. She says, Oh my gosh, you know, I, just, I was standing here taking your order thinking, why in the world is that thing on? These people must be frozen. And she said, I'll, I'll take care of it. Okay? Yeah, music, seat spacing, cleaners. Have you guys ever gone to a restaurant where they go, okay, yeah, here's your table, and you're like, oh, nice. There's the mop and the bucket and the dirty water and the Lysol smell. And yeah, um, I mean, we're in, you know, there's 45 tables here. Why does that have to be in the visual corner, first of all? Why isn't it tucked behind a wall? But why do I have to sit here and look at it and smell it? You know, and again, it's little things like this. They, they go away, they say, oh, geez, don't go to that restaurant. You should have seen this horrible. They clean her out. They did, they, you should have seen this lady. They didn't seat right. They made, her, they made her get up, and she had a bad hip. And oh, my gosh, the cigarettes and crap all over the front walk when we oh, don't go there, you know, you don't spend your money there, it was 150 bucks, not well spent, oh, well thanks, you know, as we're at the barbecue, I think we'll go somewhere else, right, and the interesting thing about a restaurant, which is the most crazy thing in the world, to me, is if I own a restaurant, here's what I'd be thinking, and maybe some of you in the business, in your businesses you're in, have the same feeling, but the, inter or have the same makeup, the interesting thing about a restaurant is, Somehow or another, they got the sale. They didn't have to go hunting and pecking for a customer, going through a six month sales process and <laughs> da -de 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 -de, and finally get somebody's you know commitment to give you money for a good or service as you pay. No, they walk into the restaurant somehow or another. They went in there. How often do you see a wait waiter come up and go, "Okay, sir, um, what would you like?" You know, I think we're gonna leave. I think we're gonna go someplace else. Thanks, anyways. <laughs> what? What happened? You know, what do we do? We never see it. So their whole job is this whole concept of repeat customers, retention, get people back. We want you to have a great experience, so you come back. We know you're gonna pay for the meal. We know we got you this time, right? But we want you to come back. We want you to tell 77% of your customers. So here are three more things, right? So now water. You got the initial water round, you got round number two, and round number three, right? And they're embedded, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll give you a handout in a minute, they're embedded into a you know standardized experience event process, but nonetheless, I think most good restaurants, there's at least three water rounds, right? Now the wait staff demeanor, okay? Eye contact, smiling, pleasant, looking at you, patient, is the body language, you know, like, hey, I'm glad you're here, or is the body language, you know what, this whole day is an inconvenience to me, I shouldn't even be here, and you're part of the inconvenience, what do you, what do you need, what, what do you like, what would you like, <laughs> oh, what, what's, your, oh what's, my, what's my food going to be like, well, you got wait staff demeanor, you got wait staff meet and greet, you got wait staff Q&A on the pre-order, okay, any questions about the menu, yeah, I do, I have a couple, okay, great, order taking, hey, but I want that, I want it medium, and I don't want the onions, I want this instead, put this dressing on the side, Okay, great. Those are all order modifications. We finished. Okay, now great. Let me uh, recap that order for you. So you want the uh, you want the onions. You want the caramelized onions, right? Yes, not the raw onions. You want great caramelized onions. You want them up and eat with mushrooms on it. Okay, great. So there's all these right. There's all these wait staff things that are that again can be standardized menu layout, user friendly versus difficult to read. I don't know about you, but that said. Well, uh, can you get the light on? Uh, give me your phone, honey. How many times have you been, you know, we're sitting there with the phone and the light on in a restaurant. This menu is horrible. It might look artsy-fartsy, but you know what? The menu was marketer-specific. Oh, it's designer-specific. It's so cool. I love the browns. Can a 60-year-old customer read the thing? 
with readers. You know what I mean? That's the art. So you want to make it user friendly versus difficult to read, right? Menu accuracy. Well, do you, do you tell me here that it's braised in a Bernays sauce and blah, 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 and then I get it back and it looks like it's been bought, broiled? I mean, what's, what's the deal? You know? So is it accurate? Menu ingredient information. Oh, you didn't tell me that I had peanut sauce. I'm allergic to peanuts. I mean, I got a, you know, I got an empty pen. I'll go into, you know, anaphylactic shock. Well, why didn't you say? Well, I don't know, you know. So are the ingredients, you know, is the ingredient information, do they give you raw onions or red onions when you ask for caramelized onions? When it says caramelized onions, you want to make sure it was caramelized onions, but they still give you red Menu review and specials. So again, this is the wait staff part, but there's that whole process. Okay, here's the menu review. We're noted for this, we're noted for that. Here are the specials, right? So there's all these different things. How many times have you been, how many times have you been out with family or your relatives? They didn't even tell us the specials today. Did you see that? Did you notice that? We don't even know what specials. Excuse me, are there the specials? You know, and people, you know, what happened? You should have, it's it's a standardized experience event, right? Bath, okay, now we placed the order, I mean, now we gotta go to the bathroom. Oh my gosh, the place was horrible. Or, wow, the place was really good. Bathroom item necessity stock. Can't wipe my, my I can't wipe my butt. You know, I can't I can't wipe wipe my hands after they're wet. There's no air coming out of this thing. You know, I can't find there's no soap. Just banging the thing, right? And then you, you finish up and you do everything, and you go to grab the door to go out. And how do you work that thing down here? What's that? Oh, man, I don't know what that is. Jeez, unbelievable. Well, first of all, maybe a swing door. Maybe you reinstall a swing door. You used to push with your shoulder and you go through. And on the other side, you push through. Or maybe if you do have a handle, you have a garbage can right there so you can take a paper towel over and go like that, grab that, and then throw it out. A lot of places do. But a lot of places don't. And so again, bathroom hygiene-centric exit. All little stones in the mosaic, right? In the mosaic of the experience events. Wow, entree delivery. What was it like, right? Entree delivery timing, entree accuracy. Wait, I didn't ask for raw onions, I asked for caramelized onions, right? Or how about the entree delivery? We've actually been in restaurants where the, the sh waiter's wearing a short sleeve shirt. The, the trays are meat, the trays are coming like that, or the plates are coming like that. The hamburger's rubbing up against his muscle. You know, the french fries are, you know, flopping all over on his shirt, you know, whatever. And I mean, I'm like, my wife's like, oh my gosh, well, that's not my hamburger. Yeah, to me, it didn't really matter. But still, when I come to think about it, I don't know what the guy's hygiene things are, but I don't really want my fresh burger rubbing up against his skin, but you know. So, you know, the entree delivery time. Where is that meal? Oh my God. Excuse me, do you have any idea where our food is? You know, uh, it's coming. Oh, that's a BS. Yep, here come, the, here come the schemes and all this, right? We don't know, but again, it doesn't matter because it's what they think. It's their experience, their judgment is on. So we don't, maybe, maybe they did make a mistake in the kitchen. We don't know, but we get so many lies throughout the course of our life, we just don't know. So what do you want to do? You want to try to make sure you know, the kitchen has everything as accurate as possible, right? Entree taste. Let the taste, let the temperature. Hey, this thing's been sitting out for 35 minutes. It had it, it's cold, it's cold, absolutely cold. Oh wow, let me take it back, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll fix it. Well, yeah, you're just gonna mic it, but so, yeah. so, you know, but I mean, right? So, why doesn't it come out right? And it doesn't match the expectation. Well, that was the picture I ordered. What is that? <laughs> you know, that looks nothing like the picture. Or I thought I ordered it without caramel. I thought it says caramelized onions, but I got red onions. What's the deal? So again, sorry, I keep pointing to that. You really like your caramelized onions. Yeah. 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 <laughs> now, wait staff, wait staff order update. Hey everybody, your your order should be out in about five minutes. Does anybody need water and more drinks? You know, okay, boom. Order the flyby checkup. Is everybody okay? You know, is everybody all right? Yeah, okay, great. Well, if you need anything, let me know. You know, they're, they're just doing the flybys, they're going to another table. And then what about the wait staff ongoing observation skills? Your attention, I'm dying for water, by the way. I'm dying for water, but I'll drink coffee instead. Uh, <laughs> you know, but same thing, right? You're like, 
She doesn't pay attention. She's not making eye contact. Yeah, it's like the plane where you know, you know, you, you're, oh, I don't want this person to sit next to me, so I'm not going to make eye contact. Well, it's a wait, wait staff. Well, supposed to make eye contact. So what are the ongoing observation skills, right? Now, bill delivery timing, right? Oh my gosh, where's our waiter? Oh, the waiting can't. Well, well, what time do we have to be there? Maybe I've got to be at the field at 2.30. Oh my gosh, it's 2.20. We've been waiting for 20 minutes. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> 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 Ongoing observation skills, very good. Uh, wow. <laughs> but listen to these skills, too. Um, you know, where is that? Bill accuracy. What? Wait a second. You just said, no, you know, oh no, we've got to go through, get the bill changed. Oh my gosh, can I take another 10 minutes? Right? Mm -hmm. Payment processing time. They take your check, walk away. Where, 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 where'd they go? I've seen the waiter, waiter or waitress walk by, you know, 13 times now. I mean, I mean facetious, but, you know, okay, now, you're done. Can wait staff thank you. Thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure serving you guys. Great. Or nothing. Okay, well, I guess you're really not going to feel like that much. But, you know, an establishment thank you. Someone, a hostess or host, or somebody's on the out, outbound as you're leaving. Hey, thank you so much for coming in today to the to the North 59 Outdoors restaurant. You know, we, we really appreciate your business. So before we go there, so now what I'm gonna do is pass this out, and then let's bring this events just to go to a sit-down restaurant. I've noticed it's probably 40 because I forgot your drink delivery, you know, with your actual drinks. But now, take a look at that, and if there's any spares, pass them on, pass me one just so I can see it. But what you'll see there is the phase, Right? So you're going to see the action. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So on the far left corner, you're going to see the phase or the steps. So that's where it fits in. In my chronological thinking, if I'm only in a restaurant, this is where it fits in. And then number two, okay, personnel. Now, who do I need to make sure I train and talk to and coach to, to this person to ensure that they know what their role is? Better yet, they know what their expectations are. Right, and then uh, you know you can go on down the line and see here that yeah, you know, there's there's kitchen personnel, there's bus personnel, there's management, there's wait staff, there's host and hostess. So you know there's a lot of different people here. In some cases, bartender. I actually did a podcast called "Who Put the Who Put the um, Wilted Mint in My Mojito." My wife and I were at a beautiful restaurant in Michigan. And the girl comes up, and not only now, this is interesting, but she spills, I get, I don't drink, I have non-alcoholic beer, so I have a non-alcoholic beer. Well, the waitress spills the non-alcoholic beer on my wife as we're looking at picturesque Lake Michigan on the top of a beautiful uh, deck in a pub in, you know, in this great little Michigan town. And next thing I know, I hear my wife, I'm looking out, and she's delivering out here. Oh, my gosh! I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. So my wife's covered in beer. So they clean her up. You know, we can excuse that. The girl is kind of sorry. Then she gives my wife her mojito. And my wife has maybe one drink, you know, a couple, every couple of weeks. So she gets a mojito. I'm like, what, what is that? Oh my gosh, what is it? it? It's literally like, oh, let me find that leaf from last October. Let me get <laughs> grab that and put it in your little glass. And now I'll put your ice cubes and your stuff in there. And then they deliver. Now, I'm sorry, and I don't mean to be mean, but that that bartender had to be absolutely blind <laughs> not to see that was a dead leaf. And there's a dead leaf in my wife's mojito as she's drawing the beer off her skin looking at beautiful Lake Michigan. Right? And so you're thinking, okay, the rest of the meal is pretty darn good. Great hamburger I had. The rest of the meal, the ambiance, the atmosphere is pretty cool. Seagulls flying, it's great. But unfortunately, we'll never go back there. Now, how do you make that intentional decision? And so this is a word that we don't find in Scripture too much, but we need to be that intentional person. So the reason I broke this down this way, and the reason we went over these experience events, is because really what I challenge you to do is to identify your own standardized experience events in your own business, and then glorify God by serving others with Christ-like, standardized experience event behavior. How can you now take those 39 steps 
and how or what can you do, how can you train your, your staff or your personnel or your associates or your group or your team that you're part of, how can you guys get together and go in every one of these phases of the customer transaction, let's glorify God, let's serve the Lord Christ, our Savior in this, and as we serve other people, how can we serve God through doing this in a God-glorifying way? So I would leave a section over here, you know, did you train your host or hostess on this effectively? And then as an owner, as an operator, as a manager, as a person, as a salesperson, what can you do in these steps to make sure that you're representing the character of Christ? Right? And, you know, so some thoughts. What would you guys say in your own businesses? How can you, with intentionality, take one of your phases of a transaction and plug Christian character into it? Anybody? Take it home and, and think about that. And, think, and break your break your purchases down. Now, I'll leave you with some great news. I got about eight minutes, and this is the best news I could ever give you. And I'm, I, I use this so hopefully you won't ever forget that you can show this stupid little thing with three flip phones on a uh, computer, you know, gorilla glue. So here's the deal. I mean, if you think about it, and I'm from Jersey, so in Jersey, you never say yeah, you never say yeah yeah, you always say yeah yeah. 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 It's always in bunches of threes. So this is saying yes to respond to all inquiries, follow up comprehensively, and I'm going to say yes to follow through. So this is it. If you were to look at this, you respond to every inquiry. So we're not all going to work in restaurants. We don't work in restaurants. But in at the end of 35 years, I built my sales agency on this. This is my hallmark piece of advice. This is the hallmark of Philippians 234 posture service, business mapping. And it is respond to every inquiry. John, I got your email. Thanks so much. I'm traveling today, but I'll answer it later tonight. Now, follow up. You go, you got John's question. He now, you have to put a question in internally, so you follow up for John. You say you already told him you're going to get back in touch with him tomorrow or later tonight in the hotel. You ask your question, you got an answer from the factory, you know, before, uh, you know, you, uh, before they left, for, left the office. So now you got an answer, and now you give John the follow-through. So, right? So now you do the follow-through. So it's respond, follow-up, and follow-through. So you respond first, you follow-up second, and then you follow-through. And so these three flip phones, just to represent those three things, and this is what... 80% of your customers are not doing. I can tell you because I've been, I've had sales report to me, and I've, I'm one working with customers, and they're saying, you guys just aren't following up, they're not following through, nothing's happening. I, I went to a new company two months ago. The guy says, like, for six years, we haven't done anything with your company because the guy before you just never followed up, never followed through. I hear it over and over and over. So if you got nothing from today, and you did nothing different today, but you went home, and it's on the back of that little business card I gave you, if you were to say, yeah, 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 yes to each one of these, right, in old Jersey way, Sorry. yes to represent the, uh, that, there you would. So here, um, where do you find Simple Biz 360? Here's my website links, my podcast. Uh, I'm going to be switching to a, a, a new podcast uh, coming up in, in uh, October. It's going to be called One Minute, One Question. So it's going to be a minute long, like a little pod burst. We're just going to ask one question. And uh, it's a question for you to go home and think, and contemplate on these business owners and operators and what to do. And again, what uh, what did what do a lot of customers like? Well, I forget what the percentage was, but they like they like to be shown appreciation from the establishment they just paid their money to. So remember to thank your customers. I thank you guys. Put together thank you notes, thank you cards. Let them know. Let them know after a transaction. Let them know after a meeting. You know, you thank them for their time and effort. But you know, this is a, a great exercise to discover ways that we can make sure that love for our neighbor, love for others, humility is injected into everything we can do, all the character <coughs> traits that Jesus uh, was all about. You know, how do we take those into the workplace and make sure they come out in each one of those legs of the experience event? 
What do you guys think? Any questions? I mean, any ideas?